So starting off our list in at number 10 with President JFK on November 22nd 1963 the 35th president was assassinated in Dallas Texas while riding in a presidential motorcade. This assassination shocked the entire world. The president was expected to be buried at the Kennedy family plot in Massachusetts but his wife said he belongs to the people so he is going to be buried at the Arlington National Cemetery where people are free to visit his grave site. There is actually an internal flame at his grave that has been burning since his burial in 1963. That's pretty interesting. Coming in at number 9 we have the Shugbro inscription. The thing is about this tube message is that we have no idea what it says. The Shugbro monument can be found in the grounds of Shugbro Hall in Staffordshire in England. The monument depicts the shepherds of Arcadia in which shepherds stand around a tomb. Now the monument contains a very cryptic message that reads O U O S V A V V and this is framed by the letters D and M. A lot of people that think that this is a code and the monument is regularly hailed as one of the world's top unsolved ciphers. Adding to the mystery, fingers of the stone's figurines touch the letters N and R on the phase et in Arcadia EGO. So what does this mean? Some of the world's top minds, Charles Darwin and Charles Dickens included, have actually failed to solve the text. Coming in at number 8 we have the cursed tablets. In 2003 four cursed tablets were found in the grave of a young woman who died around 2400 years ago in Greece. Brilliant. Back in the day it seems that cursed tablets were very popular and people would inscribe curses on metal and offer them to the gods. Burying tablets with the dead was believed to give the tablets direct access to the gods who would then decide to do the curses bidding. The curses were aimed at then local innkeepers Demetrios and Fangoria. One of the curses found in the grave read, cast your hate upon Fangora and Demetrios and their tavern and their property and their possessions. I will bind my enemy in blood and ashes with all the dead. Blimey, another one of the curses found in the grave wished a dog ear curse upon them. Of course. From dog curses to donkey curses up at number 7. The Egyptians, as we know, were a scary bunch when it came to protecting their final resting places. Well, it seems that a donkey curse was famously found on the tomb of Deir el Bari Graffito. The donkey curse invoked the god Seth, a donkey who would rape those who violated the tomb. We hear a lot about how the curse of King Tut came true, but we have no idea if the curse here came true because nobody wants to admit that they got harassed by a donkey, do they? Coming in at number 6 we have Amenhotep's shopping list. The ancient Egyptians were so dramatic including Amenhotep son of Hapu who died in 1300 BC. In life he was a priest and a scribe and a lover of melodrama I bet. He inscribed one of the more inventive curses that I've ever read on the doors of his final resting place. This curse actually kind of made me laugh, it reads like a shopping list of plague and pestilence. He wrote, he who enters this tomb will lose the earth possessions and honours, be incinerated in a furnace, in excretion of rights, capsize, drown at sea, have no successors, receive no tomb or funerary offerings of their own and their bodies would decay because they will starve and have no sustenance and their bones will perish. Good. Great. You get a car. No you get a car. No you get a car. Plagues, plagues everywhere. Coming in at number 5 we have this warning. Ah, I can't think of anything scarier than going to visit the tombstone of a loved one and finding these tasteless warning signs. Councillors in Plymouth in England placed garish yellow warning signs on the graves that they had deemed unsafe or hazardous. Basically they were worried that they were going to topple over at some point. I'm all about preventing some danger but honestly bright yellow signs that cover the name of the person buried, for me it's a bit of an eyesore. Mourner Paul Ford found his grandparents grave had one of the signs on and spoke out about how disrespectful it was and how the message could have been at the back of the grave. True. Coming in at number 4 we have Spooky Old Midnight Mary. It seems that a very scary message can be found on a grave at the Evergreen Cemetery in New Haven. The inscription is actually a very ghostly warning. The grave belongs to Mary E. Hart who died under strange circumstances in 1872. Around the top of her grave reads, the people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away. It seems that Mary was considered somewhat of a witch in her era and some even say that she haunts the New Haven graveyard to this day, taking souls to the underworld with her if they're by her grave at the stroke of midnight. Of course these are probably just urban legends made up to match her spooky gravestone 
although I still wouldn't want to be around at midnight just in case. You were waiting for him, here he is, coming in at number 3 we have King Toot's Terror. Do not disturb an ancient Egyptian tomb. Message received loud and clear, although it only took the deaths of six people for us to realise. Now a lot of you will be familiar with the curse of the pharaohs and what happened with Tutankhamun's grave, so I will just recap really quickly. In 1922, Egyptologist Lord Carnarvon and archaeologist Howard Carter were the first to enter King Tut's tomb. Carnarvon died from a mosquito bite to the cheek shortly after the tomb was open, a similar mark was also found on the king. George J. Gold, Audrey Hepburn, Hugh Evelyn White, Aaron Ember and Archibald Douglas Reed also died shortly after coming into contact with the tomb or someone who had entered. It seems that outside the burial chamber was an inscription that read, Death shall come on swift wings to him who disturbs the peace of the king. Hmm. Also found in the tomb was a warning on a bracelet that read, Cursed be he who moves my body, to him shall come fire, water and pestilence. Now the man on the receiving end of this bracelet actually did have his house burned down, then when it was rebuilt it was hit by a flood. Interesting. Coming in at number 2 we have a curse upon the bullies. Well, Mary of Whalingport, Massachusetts certainly got the last word, didn't she? It seems that Mary C. Delency was a nuisance in her community. She believed her neighbours were up to no good and she would shine lights into their properties. She owned a lot of cats and would spend hours feeding pigeons, which is kind of sweet, but it also seems like she was quite the recluse. She felt her neighbours bullied her and she was unwilling to let bygones be bygones. In one final act of revenge, she wrote on her tomb, May eternal damnation be upon those in Whalingport, who without knowing me, have maliciously vilified me. May the curse of God be upon them and theirs. Um, cool. Just curse the whole community then. Cheers babe. Mary died in 1985 and it seems that her curse got lost in the post, as the people of Whalingport don't believe they've come across any misfortune whatsoever. The woman who actually moved into Mary's old home said to a local newspaper that the curse didn't bother her. She said, I was frankly saddened for this lady who must have had so much turmoil in her life that she'd put this on her gravestone. Another member of the community wrote, Nobody even takes it seriously of course. It's a funny thing. We all laugh about it. Ooh, rough ride for old Mary. Finally coming into number one, one tomb that should never have been disturbed, we have Tamerlane's Terror. Did it unleash Hitler? Maybe. Tamerlane founded the Timurid Empire in the 14th century, stretching across Central Asia and Persia. Tamerlane was also known as Timur and was buried in modern day Uzbekistan, and his burial chamber was infiltrated by Soviets. Written on the wall, there was a very scary message indeed. When I rise from the dead, the world shall tremble. Whomsoever opens my tomb shall unleash an invader more terrible than I. Now, Tamerlane was indeed terrible. The Middle East and parts of India were ransacked with their their populations massacred. So did they heed this warning? Did they hell? Soviet anthropologists dug him up and what happened? Adolf Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa, the largest military operation of all time. Now, a lot of people were killed, to just put that extremely lightly. When Stalin found out, he actually had Tamerlane reburied with full Islamic rites. Days later, the Soviets eventually and finally won a battle at the Battle of Stalingrad. Hitler did continue to plague the world for another three years though. Is this why? Blink and you'll miss it, but if you look closely, you'll see that our number 10 was murdered by human wolves. One, any gravestone outlining murder freaks me out, and two, what the actual F are human wolves? So I was thinking that maybe it was something along the lines of werewolves. Now this is something that it seems that the residents of Conowa, Oklahoma, where you can find the grave think. In fact, the grave has been subject to many an urban legend. The official story of the gravestone of Catherine Cross is that she had an illegal abortion and died. Her devastated appearance considered her body to have been torn to shreds by a bad doctor, or wolf. We sat at number 9, we have this unidentified gravestone from Oskaloosa. This is in the Oskaloosa Pleasant View Cemetery in the United States. This stone reads, Unidentified baby girl found in Delaware River, May 1977. That is so horrendously sad. The baby was never identified and neither her parents or killer if they were separate people have ever been found either. Coming into number 8, this next tombstone is pretty much just a fancy way of saying you're next. It reads, To the person passing by, as you are now now so once was I, as I am now, you soon will be. Prepare yourself and pray for me. Wait, wait, wait. 
as I am now, you soon will be, but like, Oscar, you're dead. Oh, I see. This tombstone is pretty much just a direct threat, telling you that, yeah, you're gonna die. Who even needs words when you could just let the whole horrifying stone itself do the talking? <laughs> Am I right? Coming into number seven, we have this very, very awake but dead baby. It is always depressingly sad when a baby dies, but is this any way to immortalize them? The baby is sitting bolt upright in a crib while a lamb that may or may not have been some kind of animal sacrifice lays at the foot of the bed. Hi there, cold dead baby stone eyes. Yeah, why are you following me wherever I go? I, I don't like it, I couldn't be near it, it's too much. Coming into number 6, we have a victim of the beast. If you visit the Salt Lake City Cemetery, you might not want to leave any flowers on Lily E. Grace's grave for fear of the repercussions. It seems like Lily, who died in November 1958, aged 77, was a victim of the beast, or so her gravestone says. They even added a 666 at the end of the inscription, just to make it clear which beast she fell foul of. Weirdly, her husband is always also buried at the same cemetery, but far away from his wife's corpse. The website weirdus.com claims a woman who walked on the grave later had an accident with her car door, which is spooky. I wanted to add something scary, but like a little bit more fun at number 5. We have this descriptive cause of death. Back in the day, it was traditional to write a cause of death on a person's tombstone. Poor old George Spencer Millet, who lost his life by essentially being kissed to death, has this for a gravestone. That's right, George was just 15 when he fell foul of an Inca razor stabbing him to death. His tombstone basically does all of the talking, we'll tell you all about it. He was trying to escape birthday kisses from fellow office workers when he fell on the eraser ink. Weird. Obviously it's sad, but a deep dark part of me just loves this description on his gravestone. Another pretty frank and way less hilarious tombstone at number 4, we have Pressed to Death. Again, part of the descriptive tombstone category, it seems that Giles Corey was pressed to death, which is a really, really horrible way to go and makes reading his stone, like, really uncomfortable and claustrophobic. It turns out that he was actually murdered as part of the Salem Witch Trials, which makes his death even spookier. This gravestone can be found at the Charter Street Cemetery in Salem, Massachusetts. We have a murder victim's gravestone at number 3. I think like a murder victim's gravestone is always disconcerting. William Wood was murdered in Derbyshire, England in 1823. Not only that, he was actually pretty brutally murdered. The almost 200 year old gravestone marks the spot where he was found dead and frankly tells the world that indeed he was murdered. He was here murdered, apparently. This is very chilling and if you want to find it for yourself it's between Disley and Whaley Bridge, but personally I wouldn't want to walk down there alone at night. Coming into number 2, putting the head into headstone, we have, I guess, this head in a stone. Ooh. Nothing sends a scarier tombstone message than a physical head in a box. The head belongs to the patron saint of venereal disease. Yes, there is a patron saint of venereal disease, which actually sends an even scarier message. The saint was Saint Vitalis of Assisi, who died in 1370. His name is on the case, but to be honest, I'm much less concerned with what is on the case than I am with what is in it. Finally, at number one, we have an Ouija board headstone. So you know Ouija boards are used for contacting the dead, right? Well, what better place to do this than in a graveyard where, I mean, it's literally filled with dead people. Inventor of this spirit game, Elijah Bond, insisted on an Ouija board headstone for his own grave, which is very terrifying and very creepy. I mean, imagine playing with that thing, like, absolutely no from me, get me far away from that. Okay, coming in at number 10, we have the planes that they died in. Hey, this gives me the serious creeps. In a graveyard deep in the woods surrounding the Amari Air Base, you will find a pilot's graveyard where the bodies of Soviet era airmen who died are buried with the tail fin of the planes that they crashed in. It's really, really sad, honestly. The tail of the plane that they crashed in is their tombstone. The effect of the fins is that the graveyard kind of looks like it's filled with ground sharks. It's truly haunting and very real when you realize that these are the actual wreckages and they're marking the graves of the dead. It becomes horrifyingly imaginable. In our number nine spot today, we have Herman Harband. Herman decided to have a headstone made ahead of time before his death, but didn't even actually end up getting buried there, which is quite interesting. Herman had a message he wanted to get across, however, and he certainly did just that. It's actually a bit of a sad and terrifying story, and it really shows the place Herman was in when he made it. The stone reads, Herman Harband, born in 1918. 
my wife Eleanor Arthur of Queens, New York, lived like a princess for 20 years, traveling the world with the best of everything. When I went blind, she tried to poison me, took all my money, all my medication, and left me in the dark alone and sick. It's a miracle I escaped. I won't see her in heaven because surely she's going to hell. Herman absolutely went off, but it definitely seems like he kind of had a right to because that story is simply terrible. Good news is that Herman ended up getting remarried and he lived a happy and very long life until he passed away in 2011. In our number eight spot today, we have Francis and Mary Huntrudes. This stone is one of the less sad ones on this list today, thankfully. And while still haunting, it's in more of a poetic or beautiful way. Or at least I think so. This tombstone is from Francis and Mary Huntrudes, and their stone tells the story of their lives and their love. It reads about how they were both born on the same day in 1600. They were married on their shared birthday, they had 12 children together, and then they both passed away on their birthdays just shortly after turning 80. That is quite some love story, and honestly, what are the chances? But the final two lines of the text on the tombstone really sum up the story so perfectly. They read, Each tender heart so fit a match surely could never be, both in their lives and in their deaths agree. Maybe this match was simply a serendipitous coincidence, but I definitely would like to think otherwise. In our number seven spot today, we have the Tazacorte Martyrs Memorial. This one is a little different from the others on this list today for a couple reasons. Firstly, these are tombstones for many individuals. And secondly, because there isn't a message left with them that I want to talk about, but instead just the entire eerie nature of the whole situation. This may appear as a grave site that has been flooded, but it's actually an underwater memorial. In 1570, a group of Jesuit missionaries boarded a ship from Portugal to Brazil. A French pirate named Jacques Soury boarded the ship along with them, and from there, he and his men took the lives of all of the priests. Some of them even had their limbs cut off before they were thrown overboard. The lone survivor of this day was the ship's cook. The memorial features 40 crosses for each of the lives lost, and it is located near the area of the massacre, which is close to La Palma Island, 18 meters below the surface. I might be alone in this belief, but I think that there is just something extremely haunting about an underwater memorial. In our number six spot today, we have Jeremy Bibb Balasok. This tombstone goes hand in hand with an absolutely insane story about Jerry's life. The short of it is that Jerry, who is a professional wrestler, ended up vanishing after getting in trouble with the law. He was wanted for charges of fraud, and while no one knew his whereabouts for six months, when his mother picked up a magazine one day which featured the victims of the horrible cultist Jonestown Massacre, she sadly saw her son's picture alongside all of the others. This led to there being a tombstone of course made for Jerry, although his body Body would have been already buried in California. So this all happened in 1978, but let's flash forward to 1990. In that year, a man named Ricky A. Weta was arrested for attempting to take someone's life. He was fingerprinted upon his arrest, and who would have thought Ricky turned out to be none other than the presumed dead Jerry? This whole story was of course huge national news because how could this have possibly happened? In the end, Jerry was caught and brought to justice a few separate times, before he passed away in a prison in Nicaragua from a heart attack that was brought on by the heat in the prison, which is a whole separate issue we'll have to save for another video. In our number five spot today, we have Martha Jane Mary McCoon. Mary's tombstone tells the tale of her final days and it truly feels like it is something out of a horror movie. Mary was born around 1838 and passed away most definitely not long enough after in 1855. She was pregnant at the time and the writing on her tombstone really says it all, so I might as well just read it to you. Bitten by rabid coyote, developed rabies, became violent, was smothered with feather bed. Apparently at the time of being bit by this coyote, Mary's husband was out of town for work and by the time he got back, his wife had already passed away and been buried and he had absolutely no idea that any of this was happening, which is extremely tragic. It was so horrible that this was the way that Mary's life was taken and it definitely makes you grateful for modern medicine, although rabies still manages to claim the lives of around 59,000 people per year. In our number four spot today, we have Mona Harold Vanny. This tombstone reads as a letter written to Mona from her children, but it certainly is not what you'd be expecting. Instead of the nice and lovely message you might think, Mona's three children detail what an absolute nightmare she was to them growing up. The stone reads, To our mother, 
You spent your life expressing animosity for nearly every person you encountered, including your children. Within hours of his death, you even managed to declare your husband of 57 years an unsuited spouse or father. Hopefully you are now insulated from all of the dissatisfaction you found in human relationships. Wow, they really did not hold back one little bit. If it makes you feel better, the message that was left on their father's stone was much more kind and loving. I guess one thing is clear, and that is that Buddy, Jackie, and Mike were not messing around. In our number three spot today, we have Charles H. Salmon. Charles Tombstone tells the story of a medical malpractice that ended up leading to his death. Basically what happened is that Charles fell ill with a cold and was given medicine to help treat it. Little did he know, but he wasn't given the proper medicine, but was instead given morphine. When he went back to the doctor to explain that he wasn't getting any better, they also gave him morphine and this caused him to end up overdosing on the drug. It truly is not quite clear how this could have possibly happened, and I'm not sure if Charles' family ever saw any form of justice for this terrible mistake, but it really is just such an awful story. In our number two spot today, we have Andrew J. Olsack. Andrew's tombstone is really straight to the point, but it is one of the saddest we have on today's list. His stone reads, Abandon an old age by wife and children. May God be more understanding and merciful. There really is a lot to unpack here. First, I have so many questions as to what happened and what led to this abandonment. Second, I have to know if this is his way of sticking it to his family who he claims abandoned him, or if this is more of just a simple goodbye. Either way, whatever the details are behind this story, coming upon this message in a graveyard would certainly make your heart sink a bit and definitely be one of those things that you just remember. In our number one spot today, we have Leo Matlovich. Leo's tombstone is one that is certainly not easily forgotten. This stone doesn't even say his name, but the reason for that will become quite clear. First, we have to tell Leo's story. Leo was a war hero in the Air Force and he challenged the policy of homosexuality in the military. Through Leo's bravery and activism, he was able to actually change a few things for gay people serving in the military, the effects of which can still be seen today. Despite Leo receiving both a bronze star and a purple heart for his service, in the end he was still discharged for being a gay man. He ended up passing away in San Francisco in 1988 after complications from HIV AIDS. His tombstone reads, A gay Vietnam veteran. While I was in the military, they gave me a medal for killing two men and a discharge for loving one. There is nothing I could possibly say that would be more profound than that, so I'll just end off this point by saying Leo and all the things he did and fought for will truly never be forgotten. Coming in at number 10, we have William Shakespeare's grave. Billy Bob Shakespeare is one of my favourite historical figures of all time for many, many reasons, but mainly because I loved his drama. William Shakespeare died in 1616 and wrote 39 plays. 154 sonnets and two long narrative poems. My favourite Shakespeare play is probably The Winter's Tale. It's a classic problem play and I really enjoy it, but I also do love Macbeth as a close second. So as we know, the famous English writer had a flair for drama and a great sense of humour. With that in mind, of course he decided to place a curse on his grave. He's buried at the Holy Trinity Church in his home of Stratford-upon-Avon. On his grave he wrote, Good friends, for love's sake forbear, to dig the dust enclosed here. Blessed be man spares these stones, and cursed be he who moves my bones. Good on you, Bill. You don't want anyone messing with your bones, I feel you. When the church was restored in 2008, care was taken to keep his bones safe. I might just curse my own grave so that I don't end up getting thrown out in the trash. Good thinking. Next up, number nine, we have Johnny Cash. The man dressed in black passed away on September 12, 2003 from diabetes, and he was buried next to his wife, June Carter Cash, at the Hendersonville Memorial Gardens in Tennessee. Their gravestones are marked by a simple tombstone that lists their last names, along with the phrases, I Walk the Line and Wildwood Flower. This famous gravesite draws a steady number of mourners who travel to the hills of Tennessee to pay their respects. Bruce Lee psh, punches into number eight. Bruce Lee and his son Brandon Lee are buried side by side at the Lakeview Cemetery in Seattle, Washington. This kung fu master unexpectedly died at the age of 32 years old from swelling in the brain caused by an allergic reaction to painkillers. It's insane. Since his death in 1973, thousands of visitors visit his grave every single year 
single year, and because of this, shrubs were planted around his grave to prevent visitors from trampling on the other grave sites in the cemetery. Our Frank Sinatra makes its way into number seven. This legendary singer died on March 14, 1998, from a fatal heart attack, and he is now buried in Desert Memorial Park in Palm Springs, California. He was buried with a bottle of Jack Daniels and a pack of Camel cigarettes, and the lyrics "The best is yet to come" is engraved onto his tombstone. Next up, number six, we have Jim Morrison. This rock legend unfortunately died in Paris on July 3rd, 1971, of heart failure. Every day, hordes of tourists visit his gravestone. It's covered by graffiti from his crazy fans. Cemetery staff attempted to clean the graffiti, and now they replaced the metal barricades around it just to protect it. Now, at number five is Princess Diana's grave. The Princess of Wales died in August 1997 as a result of the injuries that was sustained in a car crash in Paris. She is buried at the Spencer family estate in North Hampshire on Round Oval Island. Once a year between July and September, visitors are given the opportunity to visit her grave, although no one is allowed to set foot on the island. From the edge of the lake, you can see an urn, but no headstone or grave site. Shakespeare makes his debut at number four. He is without a doubt the most famous English language writer in history. Shakespeare lived from 1564 to 1616, and even till this day, thousands of people visit his grave site every single year to pay their respects. His tomb is located in Starford upon Avon in Warwickshire, England, at the Holy Trinity Churchyard. His grave is famously for having a curse engraved onto his gravestone, which Shakespeare wrote himself. It reads, Good friend for Jesus' sake, for beer, to dig the dust enclosed here. Blessed be the man that spares these stones, and cursed be he that moves my bones. I actually visited his gravestone, and reading those words actually gave me the chills. And fun fact for you guys, Danny's hometown is like 20-30 minutes away from Shakespeare's gravestone. Marilyn Monroe comes on this list number three. The world was stunned when they heard the news that Marilyn Monroe had died from an overdose in 1962. She was the iconic sex symbol in the 60s, but her final resting place was intended to be modest and private. However, because of her popularity, thousands of visitors visitors are drawn to her grave. Actually, Hugh Hefner is buried beside her, and that's because he bought the site back in 1992 for $75,000, so he could spend an eternity beside Playboy's first playmate. In at number two spot, we have the King of Pop. We're talking about Michael Jackson. He was buried in Holy Terrace section of the Great Mausoleum in Forest Lawn Cemetery in Glendale, California back in July of 2009. This is actually a famous final resting place for many other Hollywood celebrities and it attracts well over a million visitors every single year. However, the area that Michael Jackson is in is a private section, and it is closed off to the public, but thousands of people come every day. They leave flowers outside of the mausoleum. The king of rock and roll makes its way into number one spot. Elvis Presley is an absolute legend who paved the way for other musicians. He died of a prescription drug overdose in August 1977. He was first buried in a mausoleum in Forest Hill Cemetery in Memphis, Tennessee, but his body was later moved to Grace because the vandals and thieves tried to steal his remains. Although he's been dead for four decades, 600,000 people every single year still visit him. So if you buy a ticket to Graceland, his grave is a part of the Graceland tour. And I can tell you from a personal experience, the tour is well worth the money. I got to see the home that he grew up in. I got to see the home that he died in. I got to see his grave. It was a fascinating experience. I gave my tributes to him. Coming into number 10, we have this creepy angel skeleton. Also, it's alongside a really creepy hard hitting message. Okay, I personally don't know what is creepier. This terrifying as F statue of basically a winged skeleton kissing the face of a stone corpse or the inscription. The inscription reads, the blood in his veins grows cold and all strength is gone. Faith has been extolled by his fall into the arms of death. Amen. I understand that for some people death isn't a jovial occasion, but can we maybe just chill out a little bit? This sobering statue can be found at Barcelona's Pobla New Cemetery, where I don't feel like I, I'm going to be taking a trip anytime soon. No thanks. Scary and really another terrifying murder tombstone, we have the headstone of Princess Doe at number 9. The body of a teenager was found at Cedar Ridge Cemetery along Route 94 in New Jersey in 1982. The girl was thought to be between 14 and 18 years old, and her cause of death was blunt force trauma. While her face was not recognizable, it was 
clear that the girl came from a reasonably affluent background. Despite that, nobody in the area reported a teen as missing. Her gravestone is sad and scary in equal parts. It reads, Princess Doe, missing from home, dead amongst strangers, remembered by all, born Question mark. Found July 15th, 1982. Now, the stone is a living reminder that her killer, or indeed killers, are still out there. A spooky death rhyme makes these gravestones even spookier at number eight. This headstone reads It does my heart a world of good to see you in a box of wood, aka a coffin. Now, the owner of the headstone wants you to die, and that, you know, yeah, it freaks me out. I can't lie. That or the person who organized the grave is confessing to murder, which also isn't great. Chill out though, guys. It Turns out this headstone is just a Halloween decoration. I should have known because I did see the creepy cobwebs in the background and it was just too good to be true. Coming into number seven, we have Baby Monster. I feel like I could be a good baby monster. I feel like this image was in our thumbnail for part one, but I didn't include it in the actual video, so let's talk about this somewhat terrifying and cryptic baby monster tombstone. It seems that this tiny devil lived for just over three months and somehow managed to garner a bit of a rep in its short time on Earth. In actuality, whilst this does seem like the final resting place of a wee beastie, it seems that actually the tombstone can be found at the Sar Pioneer Cemetery in Washington. The story is, is that the child's surname was actually Monster, which is a bit unfortunate. I don't know, I could get on board with being called Rebecca Monster actually, it might be better than Rebecca Felgate. I shall henceforth be known as Rebecca Monster. This grave tells a horrible story at number six. So here the tombstone reads Eugene, found dead in 1929, buried 1964. So, like, wait, if Eugene's body was found in 1929, what exactly was going on with it for 35 years? Well, sadly, Eugene was a black man found dead by the side of the road in Ohio at a time when black black human rights were not equally considered or treated with much respect. It seems that poor Eugene was then embalmed and put on display at the Littleton Funeral Home where he became somewhat of a tourist attraction. I mean, how sad is that? Eventually in the mid 60s, he was finally laid to rest. Now, If anyone's going to haunt their grave, I would imagine it would be Eugene. Sometimes actions speak louder than words and this grave is giving off one pretty scary physical message at number 5. Um, yeah, so this is George's Rock. Roddenbach's grave. Sometimes people are dead and buried, but George's seems to be suggesting that he is otherwise. Just look at him climbing out of his grave like the creep that he is. Imagine being alone in that graveyard at night and seeing old George's tombstone. Like, yikes. Stay dead, Georges. Get back in there. Your time is done. So of some of these tombstones, we've done a little bit of digging to find out the story behind them. But no need with this absolute shocker at number four, as basically the full story is laid out for us pretty damn clearly. And oh my god, it's terrifying. Wondering how Mary Jane McCoon died? Just consult her headstone for further detail. So as it reads, she was bitten by a rabid coyote, developed rabies, became violent, was smothered with a feather bed when her husband and returned, she and her unborn child were dead and buried. Like TMI gravestone, you could just say loving mother, happy wife. I feel like maybe they were just kind of frank in the 1850s. Also, poor rabid pregnant Mary was only 17 when she died by the looks of things, which is really sad. Up next at number three, we have the sad headstone of Ironfoot Eva. It seems that Eva was a 300 pound giantess and sideshow performer. Her tombstone can be found at Old Trapper's Lodge in California, and it's scary for two reasons. One, the cold dead eyes of her statue, and two, the fact that the inscription suggests that she was murdered. It reads, Iron for Eva, 1800 to 1830, 300 pound giantess, poetess, singer and blacksmith, killed on her wedding day by unknown rifleman. Well, there's that. Oh, very, very sad at number two. We simply have specimens. This tombstone sends a pretty distinct and horrifyingly clinical message. Found in a mental health hospital cemetery in Columbus, Ohio, there are actually a pair of gravestones marked as simply specimens. What remains and who they belong to, we don't know. I'd feel pretty creeped out if I saw these tombstones for myself. It's largely suspected that the so-called specimens are the mutilated remains of bodies used for dissection. Like, 
call them by their name. So finally, this is the scariest headstone that I have ever seen at number one. Now a lot of these stones have told stories, but this one is enacting the murder scene. This just makes me so sad. We have Italino Lacamelli's gravestone. Italino was just a boy of five years old when he was murdered in 1925. He was happily in the garden playing with his hoop when he was murdered in broad daylight by a madman. His grave shows the moments before he dies, a happy boy with a hoop just doing his thing, but then he's chased by the scary hands of a killer coming to drag him into the underworld. Oh my god, like, I'm not okay. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Kate McCormick. This tombstone truly leaves one of the darkest and saddest stories I have ever heard. This stone reads, Kate McCormick, seduced and pregnant by her father's friend, unwed, she died from abortion, her only choice, abandoned in life and death by family, with but a single rose from her mother, buried only through the kindness of unknown benefactors. Died February 1876, age 21, victim of an unforgiving society. Have mercy on us. The story of what happened to Kate is obviously quite clear in the message and is truly an absolute nightmare. A trip to the cemetery is always a bit of a grim experience, but when you see something like this, it really does take it to a new level. All we can do is hope that wherever Kate is now, she is resting in peace and know that we haven't forgotten her or her story. Coming in at number nine, we have the circle of life. The circle of life is a beautiful thing. As we know from the first law of thermodynamics, energy can't be created or destroyed, just transferred. When we die, the energy we had in our bodies is transferred into the soil. We're worm food. The worms are then of course eaten by birds and so on and so forth. It's the circle of life. While this is a lovely notion, the gravestone makes the circle of life sound rather literal and terrifying. Having passed in 1728 at the age of 42, what does JSD get on his gravestone? Oh. Here lies Scott, left here to rot. Very, very literal. Coming in at number eight, we have The Mistake. Trial by mob is never ideal, especially when that trial gets you killed. It seems that George Johnson was murdered by locals who only realized the error of their ways when it was too late. The Boot Hill Cemetery in Arizona is famous for being the final resting place for a number of Wild West characters, including the McLaury brothers and Billy Clayton. But this point on this list is all about George. George bought a stolen horse without realizing that it was stolen. He was then sentenced to death, despite him being totally innocent. His handmade two message reads, Here lies George Johnson hanged by mistake in 1882. He was right, we were wrong, but we strung him up and now he's gone. Descriptive. Spooky. Scary or kind of funny, you decide. We have the beard at number seven. So I mean, persecution is never funny. like absolute hardline no to persecution, but persecuted for wearing a beard. Hmm. With that information presented along with this lovely stone carving, I have to say I was strangely darkly amused, or I guess the right word is bemused. Poor Joseph Palmer loved his beard, even though it was not in fashion in his lifetime in the early 1800s. It seems his local preacher even accused him of consorting with the devil because of his facial hair. In 1830, Palmer was attacked by a mob outside Fitchburg in Massachusetts. Why? Because he had a beard. They were armed with razors and scissors and they attempted to forcibly shave him. He ended up stabbing two of his attackers, lightly if there is such a thing as a light stabbing. He was then jailed and placed in solitary confinement for 15 months. Now his tombstone depicts him with his lovely beard and I'm really happy that he stood up for his facial hair to the very end. Long live the beard. Coming in at number six, I'm not sure what to name this point other than the pie. What a horrible way to go. Not only did Sir Geoffrey Hudson get a piddly little grin grave plaque, it is also very descriptive in the creepiest of ways. It seems that Sir Geoffrey had dwarfism, but still made it to the age of 63, which in the 1600s was great, even for those born without a defect. How did Sir Geoffrey go though? Well, his grave says it all. A dwarf presented in a pie to King Charles I. What a way to go. To be fair, the grave doesn't actually make it clear if this is the way he died or if this was the way he was best known. Either way, it is pretty disconcerting. King Charles I, by the way, was said to be wicked and tyrannical. He was bareheaded, so he kind of got what was coming to him. His coffin's in St. George's Chapel in Windsor, UK. Coming in at 
at number five, we have the explosion. I feel like the descriptive gravestones are absolutely the gnarliest. There are a lot of them on this list. Have a listen to the tale of poor Ellen Shannon. Her stone says that she died aged 26 after being fatally burned on the 21st of March 1870 by the explosion of a lamp filled with re Danforth's so called non explosive burning fluid. I do enjoy that the gravestone makes it clear the brand at fault and calls them out for their false advertising. This is like the sassy trip advisor or Twitter comment of the olden days. Although, to be totally fair, the poor woman did die, so it makes it pretty, pretty sad. If you want to see this spooky grave for yourself, it is in Girard Cemetery in Pennsylvania. Coming in at number four, we have the Weeping Woman of Michigan. Okay, like first and foremost, this statue is terrifying from the off. A giant stone woman standing with her arms spread. I can certainly live without her. So this is a statue of the Virgin Mary who has been placed in Battle Creek's Oak Hill Cemetery. Legend has it that she cries real tears every Sunday night. And also, apparently on Halloween and during a full moon. The under of her eyes are found to be wet on frequent occasions despite there being no discernible reason. I guess no discernible reason other than she's a spooky statue and why not? Maybe she's haunted. Maybe she's just sad. What scary message is she trying to send? I'm not sure I want to know. We have this killer at number three. We have Robert Clay Allison. Now it seems that Robert Clay Allison died age 47 in 1887 was probably actually pretty young back then. Perhaps it was someone seeking revenge as it seems that good old Rob was a bit of a social justice warrior, and that's to put it politely. To put it less politely, he was likely a murderer. His grave reads, he never killed a man that didn't need killing. Either way, who died and made Robert chief of executions? Maybe it was someone that he killed. The swine. Coming in at number two, we have what they know. What happens after we die? Well, there isn't really anyone alive who can definitely answer answer that question. The only people that know are the billions of people who have died over the course of history. Also including the owner of this gravestone. Simple yet effective, it reads, now I know something that you don't. Ooh. Well they very well just might, or they might not depending on what actually happens. I like the mysticism though. If you were anywhere near as disgruntled as Mary C. Dolency, then you may have left us some terse words on your gravestone to your neighbours too. Finally coming into number one, we have the curse. Ooh dear, Mary was a bit of a crazy cat lady stereotype. She hated her neighbours, she would shine lights in their faces and start feuds, and yes, she had a lot of pets, although she did leave all of her money to the Massachusetts Society for the Prevention of Animal Cruelty. So actually, that really was pretty nice of her. Good on ya. But sadly, she did also leave something not so nice behind, a curse to her community. Hooray. On her tombstone is written, May eternal damnation be upon those in Wailing Port who without knowing me have maliciously vilified me. May the curse of God be upon them and theirs. I'm sorry, what? Do you want to chill out? May the curse of God be upon them. Ooh. It seems though that her tombstone is all talk. Locals say they don't believe they're cursed, which is good news. Mm -hmm.